All right, class, welcome to my first ever supplemental video with examples. And I think this is very important because it can show you why we use this and why this is of importance. As you may or may not know, um, people can determine how the economy will go based off different factors. They can use the price of oil to determine if the economy is good or bad. Um, if the price of oil is high, that means the economy uh, inflation will suffer. Oops. Sorry, I don't know what happened there. Um, if, it, if oil prices are low, that means the economy is doing well. So if you can predict um, the production of oil for a country, that can tell you, give you an idea about how the economy will be doing, and you can make some good financial decisions regarding that. So back in the 1950s, a geologist named Huber, or I don't know the pronunciation, but he ended up predicting that even though it was 1956, he knew that the oil barrel of productions in the United States will reach a maximum or peak around 1965-1970. And his actuality um, it actually ended up being true and how he was able to determine this was using a logistic model. So he, what he did is he accumulated all the uh, well, data from 1930 to 1950 of U.S. production uh, in billion barrels. And then for each of the years, he computed DPDT ratio, like they basically taking the change in these p-values and divided by the year that gave them the DPDT, and he did that for all of these um, years. And then what he did is he graphed uh, the product of DPDT divided by p, or one over p times DPDT, and he ended up with this lovely scatter plot um, of the graph of p DPDT. And as we can see here, it looks to be linear, it looks to be a negative correlation. And so he did a regression line fit and he came up with an expression for this particular um, line. And that expression is a linear expression where its y value or p, one over p, d, p, d, t value is, as you can see here, point z, between 0 0.06 and 0 0.7. It actually was using the regression. 0.0649. So that's my K, if you recall from the previous video. And then the rate of change of this line is negative uh, 0.00036. And if you recall from our logistic model expression, um, this uh, slope is the same as K over L. So if I know what K is, and I know what the slope is, I can solve for L. And so now I can figure out that L, the limiting value is 180 billion, which basically means that the, he predicted that the highest production of oil um, for, for a year will be 180 billion. So now the, the question is, well, when will that limiting value, uh, when will the population of oil reach that value? And so that's when he used um, log the logistic model to answer that question. So if you recall the logistic model, you should have already memorized this. It looks like L divided by 1 plus AE to the negative KT, where our L is our 180 billion. Our K, um, as we saw earlier, was a negative 0.649. Okay. I mean, our K was... 0 0.0649, so negative k is negative 0 0.0649. And now all we have left to figure out is what is our a, okay? And so that's what we're working on now. Now, if you recall, also one of the things I really encourage you to memorize was how to determine a is, and it's the ratio between the difference between our limiting value l and our um, initial value p, okay? So what initial value did he use? Well, he went up here and he used the fact that um, he was in, this was in the 1950s, so he used the value of the production of oil in the year 1950 and was 40.9. So if 1950 is our starting year, he used P naught to represent that value. So he ended up with A value, the A value being 3.3401. Okay, so this is now my A value. And so now we have a lovely expression to represent oil production from 1950 on. 
Now that we have our logistic solution, our, our solution to our logistic differential equation, then we can use it to predict the peak oil production. In this case, when will this p value be the highest? At what time t will that be the case? Um, so if you remember, our highest value will be when you, uh, p is equal to L over 2, half of the limiting value. And um, if that's the case, since p is also equal to L over 1 plus a to the e times e to the negative kt, if p is going to be equal to L over 2, then that would imply that this right here would have to be equal to 1 because L over 2 is going to be equal to L over 1 plus 1. So the question is, when will a e to the negative kt be equal to 1? Well, using our lovely um, algebra skills, we can solve this expression to say that when t is equal to 1 over k times natural log of a is when we'll be able to t determine when it will reach the highest value. So since we already know what our a is, we already know what our k is, we can easily find out these values. And our A is 3.410 and our K is 0 0.0, what was it? 0 0.0649. So now we have a way of answering that. Oh, they actually use the And we end up to get around T is around 19 years. So 19 years from 1950 is 1969. Yes. <laughs> okay, so he says time to peak oil prediction he predicted will be around the 1969. The amount that um we will they will produce in 1969 will be around three billion barrels. And he just he uh, solved that equation. Okay. I mean it will be a difference of three billion barrels. Anyway, I'll get a chance to do this year. So what we have here is the book is we have a graph with this bottle which is the actual values for the dots or the actual values. So this is the model that he expressed up here. This is the model. And as you can see, this is what it looks like. And it does peak right around here. And the production of bar bar barrels is that year ends up being um, very close to the actual year that it peaked, which was 1970. Isn't that so cool? Well, uh, again, this is not an exact science. This is predictions, and we're using a model that we're assuming to be correctly describes the situation when it actually doesn't exactly describe the situation, but it gets us close enough to determine that. And if I were to graph um, dp dt um, using the slope field for the solution, we would get this type of cubic type curve, and our inflection point would be around. 1970, as you can see right here. Okay, so it works out. Another example using population growth. If we can somehow predict when the population will be at its highest, we have a way of making sure we have certain resources available so that we will be prepared for this high population. So, again, people in public policy would really be interested in being able to accurately predict the population growth. So how well does the logistic model do with um, the, the actual situation? Well, we're going to take a look at this based off of population growth of the United States in the years 1860, around 1870, and see how well it does um, to be able to determine that. Now, I'll give you a big hint, a big reveal, spoiler alert, is that the uh, actual and logistic model seem to be very close in values. Um, around this time frame, all the way up until we get now to the year um, probably 1940. And then the logistic model is very different from the actual model. So for these years, it was pretty close. Okay. So how did they come up with it very quickly? They did the same thing before, looked at data from pre-4, and came up with the best fit scatter line with a regression of 0 0.0317 plus a negative 0 0.0001652. So again, this is my K value in my um, logistic model. And I can use that to determine my L value since um, this value right here will tell me uh, is what negative K over L is. So I get that L is equal to 
190, around 192. Again, if we had time, I would show you the data and how they came with the scatter plot, but we don't have time. So now we are um, almost ready to come up with a solution to this equation. Um, the only thing we're missing is, of course, our A. So they, they said that uh, the initial year um, at, I believe it was 1790, the very first year, as we can see right here. And so the population here is 3.9. And so they used the difference between the limiting value of 192 um, to 3.9 and then divided by 3.9 to get our A value. So now we are ready to come up with our logistic model to this differential equation. And it looks like this, plugging in the values that we have, okay? So let's actually graph this equation in the Inspire and see what it looks like. Again, our limiting value was um, 192, of course, this is in millions. And as we can see here, it looks very much like the logistic uh, model that we talked about. And as we can see here, where it's at, it um, reaches the biggest rate of change is right here at halfway here. So anyway, so it's right here as well. And we can use that to predict um, when it will reach its highest value, which it seems like it reaches it right around here, which this is the 300 years and 200 years. Okay. But again, these models aren't 100% accurate. This is just a way to get a very good idea. And they use some very good math and they get very close to the actual solution. So I hope you enjoyed this supplement. It makes it real for you. See you in class. Bye-bye.